Um, well, thank you very much, everyone, for um, sticking around to the bitter end to hear about Victorian film. Um, as Dot mentioned at the beginning, um, my name's Rachel and I'm a publisher in our editorial team. Um, and I've been working on our new film product, Victorians on Film, for the last couple of years. And I'm thrilled to see the platform publish um, in 2022. Um, so Victorians on Film will be a primary source database comprised entirely of film content. Uh, the films will help researchers to study the world of the late Victorians captured by the earliest pioneers of film. Across around a, a thousand films, users will be able to gain insights into filmmaking techniques, uh, the development of film genre and key events in the late Victorian and Edwardian periods. Um, most excitingly, um, I, I think, our students and scholars will be able to um, get a glimpse into the everyday lives of Victorians and Edwardians through the actuality footage, which is a strong feature of this collection. We're excited to work with the British Film Institute again on the single archive resource, um, and the resource will showcase two of British cinema's most important early film archives. Uh, firstly, we'll include the Victorian film collection featuring films created during the late Victorian period 1895 to 1901. Uh, these, these films showcase the incredible range and inventiveness of Britain's dynamic and useful film pioneers. Um, they experimented with the new medium of film during these first five years, creating news and comedy and drama and fantasy. Um, and crucially, they recorded that world of the late Victorians themselves. And this resource will also feature the extraordinary collection of filmmaking pioneers, uh, Sagar Mitchell and James Kenyon. Uh, the Mitchell and Kenyon collection is the largest collection of actuality films in the world. And their work showcases the development of film technologies right through this period and provides further glimpses of ordinary people going about their everyday lives. The range of subjects covered by the films is wide and fascinating. And I've listed a few here on this slide. Um, and they're wonderful films to engage with because so many of them demonstrate firsts in cinema history. We'd like to showcase a few of those firsts now alongside some of the key research themes. So films function as a source of entertainment was recognised very early um, and scholars can identify popular culture trends that influence the developments film uh, influenced the development of films for enjoyment. Uh, so themes and subjects typically covered by optical devices such as magic lanterns, stereoscopy, panoramas, kinescopes, they can all be seen in these early films, um, such as Fire, a film by James Williamson, um, which features a narrative recognizable from magic lantern sets of um, a policeman discovering a fire and going off to get help. Um, music hall as well can be seen um, influencing these uh, films um, as well as vaudeville and other theatres as well. Um, entertainment of Victorian audiences was a huge driver of innovation as filmmakers began experimenting with illusion and editing to create action sequences and drama and suspense and romance as well. Um, there are films of car crashes and explosions and objects appearing and disappearing, uh, early split screen effects and manipulation of viewer perspective. Um, we're going to play you a short film now. Um, Dot, if you wouldn't mind um, getting that one started, and I'll continue talking over the top. That's great. Um, so innovations can be traced um, throughout the collection, um, from the very flashy to the seemingly quite minor. And a really fascinating example um, of the latter can be seen in this film that we're showing you now, How It Feels to be Run Over, which was a 1900 film by Cecil Hepworth. Um, the premise of this film is uh, the Victorian society was notoriously terrified of cars, um, of the horseless carriage, as it was called, um, and the impact of our roads. And here, Hepworth provides the audience with a frightening first person perspective of what happens when you're mowed down by a reckless driver. Um, there we go. It's not the first first person death scene to be uh, created in cinema, um, but at the end, Hepworth inserts the first known use of intertitles um, as um, oh, mother will be pleased, kind of sarcastically flashes across the screen. Um, and intertitles become fundamental to silence and emerge newsreels as, as filmmaking um, develops. Um, the films in the resource feature 
early precursors of newsreels as well, um, featuring uh, capturing contemporary events as they happen or recreating them for Victorian audiences. Um, there are multiple films of Queen Victoria, most especially during her 1897 Diamond Jubilee procession and her funeral in 1901. Um, there's also footage of the funeral of Gladstone in 1898 and the coronation of Edward VII slightly later, um, and footage of uh, royal tea parties as well. And films document or they recreate key moments in Britain's imperial history um, with footage of military leaders and operations, um, as well as moments of victory and defeat during the Boer War. Um, the collection includes the first ever film of Queen Victoria, sitting very comfortably in a cart, as you'll see in this slide, um, complete with dog in lap. There are lots of dogs and cats featured throughout this um, collection. Um, it seems as soon as we invented film, uh, we started to um, use them for comedy and filming our pets, which is very relatable. Um, and Victoria recorded in her diary on the day that this was filmed um, that um, it was a wonderful process representing people representing people and their movements and actions as if they were alive. Um, and everyday life is documented with our actuality footage of factory gates, street scenes, holiday makers at seaside resorts, people walking their dogs, local festivals and visits to the zoo. Um, there are films of football and rugby matches, um, performing gymnasts, bicycle rides through Hyde Park, um, athletics and horse racing as well. One of my particular favourite um, actuality films, um, again, I just wanted to show you, Dot, if you wouldn't mind getting that one started. Um, and this is from the Mitchell and Kenning collection, and it captures workers leaving the cooperative wholesale, wholesale factory in 1900 in Manchester. Um, Mitchell and Kenyon specialised in locality film, aiming to capture as many people as possible in their shots. Um, they're famous for their factory gate films. Um, and this example provides a fascinating glimpse of the men, women and children finishing their day, walking, chatting, noticing the camera and reacting to the camera as well. Um, my particular highlight you'll probably see in just a moment is a young woman who approaches the camera arm in arm with her companion um, and then panics at the last minute and hides her face from the camera. Again, a very relatable camera based moment. Um, this film also starts, you'll have um, seen at the beginning, with a showman demonstrating what people should do in front of the camera, which reminds us that the films aren't purely documentary as we understand them. They're aimed at creating moments in time, but they're primarily entertainment. And Mitchell and Kenyon would create the footage and then invite the public to view the films later in the day or the next day, adding a, a slightly performative element to the people on screen, um, which is um, really, really interesting. Um, Dot, if you want to pause it and we'll move on to the next slide, if that's okay. So the films uh, will be accompanied by a selection of research tools within the resource. Um, these features will place the films in their historical context, highlighting their significance and demonstrating their value for studying Victorian history and culture. Um, we'll include a selection of essays and videos uh, covering British cinema and film consumption, technology and special effects, gender and sexuality, um, an essay that will explore the absence of minority groups within these films, um, local film and class, as well as case studies on using um, film as primary sources. Exhibitions will highlight key innovations, pioneering filmmakers and producers, um, and the early emergence of genre, um, and the beautiful biograph films that will also feature in this resource. Um, the films will be enhanced with detailed metadata to ensure the films are as discoverable as possible, and each film will be accompanied by a time-coded audio description transcript as well. <laughs> 